Last time, at least on the Firebird anyway, I was prepping these parts for paint. I think I'm good to go. I've got this sanded smooth. I mentioned when I was working on, I think it was when I was working on the bumper, that I wanted to see if I could polish up the car and bring the shine back to it so I didn't have to re-clear coat the whole car. We just clear these parts. I've been doing some experimenting and some playing around with it and it's coming back around. So I'm gonna show you how I did it and how I went from this to that. Nice and smooth. I did a polishing video recently. I tried just that. That wasn't quite good enough. If you want to watch that polishing video, get a little more specifics on the polishing itself. Watch that video up here. I'll show you how I did this. We'll get this shined up. This is after a little bit of work. This is maybe, I don't know, half hour. So not a ton of work, and but it took a little more than just polisher. I tried to polish it with the Adams One Step Polish I used in another video. That doesn't cut good enough. I bought some of this Meguiar's Pro Speed compound. And it's supposed to be like, like it has a scale here on the side. It's at 12, so it goes to 12, not even just 11. These go to 11. Even that didn't quite get it. It needed a little more help. So I picked up some sandpaper. I've got a 2000 grit and this is a 3000 grit on the sander right now. I did it with a thousand grit first and then two and then three and then polished. And uh, the thousand probably was a little too much. So this is the playing around a little bit. This part over here I did with a thousand and it, it is a couple spots where I'm not sure if I didn't get through the clear coat a little bit, it's still a little bit of a dull in little spots. And then the back here, the back section over here was just the 2000, 3000, the polish, and that worked out much better. So I'm gonna finish up the sail panel and go to the other side and I'll take you along and show you how I do it. So I don't know if you can hear this or not. That's a real, real grainy feel to this. It's like, it's like it's dirty. I can catch my fingernails on it even. But it's not, it's clean. I've cleaned it, I've, I've wiped it down, I've clay barred it. That's just stuff that's in the clear coat. So I'm gonna give us a quick wet sand and then we'll see if we can bring that shine back. So this is 2000 on here now. I'll give it some soapy water. It's mostly water, just a little bit of soap in it. I like to put a little soap in, not just water when I'm wet sanding. I don't even know if that's really that matters that much, but I feel like maybe it gives a little bit of extra lubricant. Hit the paper with a little water. Uh, this sander has two speeds. Well, it's a variable speed. So as you push the handle, push the trigger, it, it changes speeds, right? So it's, it's variable that way, but it also has a max speed setting. So that is full speed, and that's about half speed. And that's about what I want. I don't want it to go crazy. I don't want to burn through anything. Uh, I don't have the vacuum, it has the hose hooked up, but I don't have the vacuum hooked up, so it'll be a little quieter this time. You don't have to put a lot of pressure on it, just kind of let the sandpaper do the work. Set that there. We'll give it a wipe down here. You can already hear it or not hear it, right? You hear that? I don't, if you can, I don't know if you ever heard it, but you hear the nothing. So it's taking that texture off. Now it's still, it's sanding. So it's gonna be now kind of a dull finish. 
So now I'm going to try to get some of those scratches out with 3000 grit. kind of a heavy duty polishing pad here. This one's got the little kind of a honeycomb waffle pattern to it. it gets cuts a little better. I have some other pads that are more of a polishing pad, which I'll transition to after this to get, you know, really, really good shine. But this is just to get this a little bit, just to get it started. That's probably too much. I don't know this McGuire stuff very well with the Adam stuff. You just put a couple of dollops on. So I figure if anything worth doing is worth overdoing. So. I throw a little detail spray on and the detail spray has a little bit of lubricant in it. So I mentioned this in that video before. This is a uh, kind of a random uh, orbiting, vibrating polisher. So it doesn't just rotate. And in fact, it doesn't rotate. It almost rotates with inertia, not with a motor that rotates it, because you can actually put your hand on it and stop it from rotating. And that way you don't burn through. So it's a very safe polisher. You could have it just sit here. If you do that with a standard orbital polisher, you'd burn right through. This is a very safe polisher. Uh, this one's from Adams. I'll put a link to this one, but there's a bunch of them. I actually put a link to a budget one that I think is pretty good. I'm gonna wipe this down. Let's give it a little spray because it's dried while I was talking. I like I need to change towels because I think this one's got enough crap in it now that it's smearing around more. Now, I don't know how well that translates on camera, but that was pretty dull before, and it's pretty shiny now. Now, it's got fish eyes. It's orange peeled, and that's okay. Let's go around, finish the top on the other side. I think you can see that on camera already. Here's the good side. Here's the bad side. This side isn't as bad as that side was. So I'm going to try to do just the 3000 on this side and not do the 2000. It's also got a little dirty again, so let me clean this up. And I'm going to get a clean towel because that towel has had it. When I'm cleaning these for this kind of stuff, it's kind of, you know, you wipe it around, but then the last wipe I do is one direction. So I hate these towels with the tags on them. Just so you're wiping all the dirt off in one direction, hopefully. Wipe down. 
Okay, there. Still a little rough. Obviously, you can see it's pretty drab. There's a chip right there I'm not going to worry about. There's a chip right there I'm also not going to worry about. Give us a little spray. Wet the panel. Uh, I also only do a small amount at a time because this will dry real fast. And uh, you don't want to do this dry. You want to make sure you're doing this with a wet surface and wet sandpaper. Uh, the other thing I would recommend, I just don't have any, is tape this off so you know where you're gone, so you don't you create a lot of work for yourself and overcompensate, like polish back across the line that you've already polished. Or you don't go far enough because everything kind of sprays around and gets wet and it looks like it's, you know, when things are wet, they look shiny. I don't have any. I ran out taping off the plastic. So we'll just make do as usual as is. Spread this around. Oh, I did forget to spray. So let's give a good heavy spray on the pad. <laughs> it turned out pretty good. Uh, I'm happy with that, and I'm going to keep doing it. I'm going to do the rest of the car. I won't bore you with all that. You don't need to watch me do the rest of the car. Wow. Okay. Well, so I said all it takes is a little bit of elbow grease. It takes a lot. Of, it takes a lot of elbow grease. Yeah, that was a lot of work. But man, it looks so nice. I'm going to do a final polish on this. This was kind of a cutting compound, so this is getting everything smooth 
and getting out some of the major scratches from, from before, plus the scratches I put in by sanding. It's not as shiny, actually, as it can be. Well, I will then do a final polish. I'm gonna wait, though, until after, and I'll do the whole cart once, after I get it painted, blend everything in, get the clear on, and then I'll do a final, fine polish, shiny as it can get. It won't be, you know, like I said, it won't be perfect. There's still some fish eyes and pits in the paint and some rock chips and whatever. It's a 27-year-old car. So a lot to do. We've got, obviously, the paint and, and, and re-clear, a taillight to replace, a headliner to put in, some interior fixes, the, the driver's side door panel's fallen off, and the window switch won't stay in, so I've got to fix that. And then the windows here has got some, I think it's the factory tint, is peeling off on the inside, it looks terrible. So you probably saw it a little bit as we went around some of the lines in the glass, so i uh, got to get that cleaned up. And uh, then we're, we're pretty close. Uh, and then the last bit, I don't know if it's last, but the next biggest thing is the wheels. I probably, I didn't get much traction with um, anybody wanting these wheels, so I am feel bad destroying these blue wheels, but I'm just gonna strip them and re-clear them. So the chrome underneath needs a little work, so I'm just gonna strip that clear off. Apparently that's just blue tinted clear. So I'm gonna strip that off with some aircraft stripper and sand those wheels down smooth and then re-clear them. At least get them all the same color chrome. Uh, sounds like a lot, and it is, but um, overall, probably another week or so uh, of work, of man hours. I don't know how long that'll actually take me, but if you've got an old car that's just got kind of a drab paint job, and you think, oh man, this is going to need new paint, it might not. It might just need to be polished. Maybe a little bit of wet sanding and some polish. If that doesn't work or you mess it up, you thought you were going to have to repaint it anyway, so... For 27 year old paint, this looks pretty good. It's really not that hard. You need some tools, right? So you could do this by hand, but as, as like sweaty as I am right now, just doing this with machines, imagine <laughs> doing this by hand, I think my arms would fall off. I would recommend a polisher. I would recommend a, a DA sander. You don't need a big compressor. You can do a DA sander, especially for as little as I was sanding at a time. A smaller compressor, like a 20, 30 gallon would probably be okay. You just need the right amount of airflow. I'll throw links down below to everything I used here. But, uh, you know, obviously get whatever you want, get what's within your budget. Anyway, thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.